In this video, we'll learn to create an amazing interactive touchscreen TV. Stay tuned. Hi, I'd like to show you what's one of the most exciting interactive teaching devices I've come up with in years. Check this out. Yeah, that's right. I have a 75 inch TV that I've turned into an interactive touchscreen. And it also has a built-in computer. Let me show you. I started out with a 75 inch TCL TV. The brand is really irrelevant. However, I also want to point out you can use any size TV you want for this. I decided to use a 75 inch TV because I have a relatively big classroom and I want people to be able to see from far away. What I did was I took my TV and I paired it with an Ubi Interactive sensor frame. This frame right here, which actually looks like it's part of the TV, is actually a frame that came in four pieces, screwed together on the sides, it connected with a USB cable, and turned this entire TV into a touch screen. It can be touched with a pen, or it can be touched with my finger. If you'd like to find out more about the Ubi Interactive sensor frame, go to www.ubiinteractive.com. Something else that makes this whole thing a really powerful setup is the fact that I've paired it with a Chrome bit. A Chrome bit is a small, tiny computer running the Chrome OS, which looks just exactly like a Chromebook, also looks like the Chrome web browser on any other type of laptop, and it is hit to this TV, making it into a giant computer. It's perfect for my classroom because we use Chromebooks, but we also use the Chrome web browser on our Mac devices. You simply plug it into the back of the TV, use the USB port in order to hook up whatever input devices you may have. If you have several input devices, you may wish to use a powered USB hub, which is actually something that I'm doing. Another great powerful tool that I use with this setup is this. This is the Kensington handheld wireless keyboard. It is a keyboard, it's a touchpad, and it also has several other controls as well. The reason I like using this is that I can't always be next to the TV in order to touch things. So I can take this with me, walk around the classroom, work with my students, and say, hey everybody, take a look, and continue working. Matter of fact, <laughs> so what did this whole setup cost me? Well, first let me start out with this. I was looking for something to replace my smart board. I had a smart board right here in this spot for several years. And I just didn't feel like I was getting the use out of it that I needed to get out of it. I was simply using it as a touch, touch frame. And even after a while, I stopped doing that. One of the things that I really wanted was something that was much brighter. Television sets tend to be a lot brighter than projectors. I also wanted good sound. When you're using a TV and you can pair it with some speakers, you get great sound. And I wanted it to be very easy to use. So, what did it cost me? Now remember, I had budgeted $3,500 for an interactive panel, which I believe was 65 inches. It was going to run the Android operating system. And that just isn't the same as what we're using here in my classroom. This situation... I have a 75 inch TCL Roku TV, the brand is not important, but I paid about $999 for this 75 inch TV. I ordered an Ubi Interactive sensor frame for $659. Now this is a 75 inch TV with a 75 inch sensor frame. They do make these sensor frames for any size TV from 20 to 200. I paired it with an Asus Chromebook. That turns this thing into a giant computer. Now my Chrome bit's up there, but you can plug it into the back. It plugs into any HDMI port on your TV. $225. And this little device I showed you earlier, the Kensington wireless handheld keyboard, just 38 bucks, and it worked great. And of course, I gotta be able to hang all this on the wall so I have a TV mount for a 60 inch to 100 inch TV, just a simple flat mount because it is a heavy TV, just $40 on Amazon. 
the whole setup, less than $2,000. So I saved over $1,500, which I used on something else I'm going to show you in just a few minutes. Hi. Okay, so now, let me show you how I used this. Now, this is a big interactive touch screen, so I can start by using my finger, or I can use this pen. This pen actually comes with the Ubi Interactive Frame. In fact, you get two of them. And it's got a little bit of a soft tip, so you don't scratch the TV. And it's mostly just hard plastic, like you find with a, a pen that comes with a smart board. I like using the pen because I don't necessarily like getting fingerprints all over the TV if I can avoid it. However, I find myself using my finger quite a bit because sometimes I've got the pen in this hand and I've got my finger over here. So let's start out with my finger. I'm going to touch Google Chrome and I have opened up our school's homepage. Now, this is not our homepage for our school's website, but this is the homepage that we have that shows up on all the kids' computers with a lot of the uh, tools and so forth that we start out with. So I've created a special Google account that I use for this particular device right here that allows me to teach and kind of match the experience that the kids are getting in the classroom. This is a great tool. It allows you to drag and drop, allows you to type. I can move things like this, move them in and out. I can grab things from over here, I can scroll, and, you ready for this? The sound is phenomenal. One thing that I found, I teach grade K through 8. My young kids identify with this particular device quite well because they grew up using tablets. And so they know how it works. Touch here, touch there, make things happen. Ah. Goodbye. One other thing that's fantastic about this is the fact that it is a multi-touch screen. So whatever you can do on a, uh, a multi-touch mouse or trackpad, you can also do right here on this screen as well. For example, such as zooming in, zooming out, scrolling with two fingers, and so forth. So if you need to scroll, you can scroll with two fingers like this. Right. And the beauty of it is, it works out of the box with the Chrome OS. Simply plug it in and away you go. So another thing I can do is also work in Google Classroom, for example. Ah, there we go. See how easy this is to use? I'm just clicking like crazy <laughs> and making things happen. Now sometimes I need to be able to use this to show kids where to click. I'm a technology teacher, and so basically one of my jobs is to show them the interface of different programs, such as Google Classroom. So, I have added this extension up here called WebPaint. And what WebPaint allows me to do is to draw on my screen. How neat is that? So now I can actually draw arrows and stuff, uh, write on my screen, and call attention to specific items that I want the kids to be able to click on. Uh, and things that I need to be able to highlight. It's so very easy to use. And it's just a free extension that anybody can download. I also use this with tools such as online timers. Because I'm using my fingers, I can just walk up here, start using the timer, start teaching my uh, particular uh, task that I'm having the kids work on, and it works great. And last but not least, using something simple like Google Docs. Let me show you how you can do input on the interactive touch screen using a Chromebook. So I can actually click on something like this and I can get an on-screen keyboard if I want and I can simply type I can type things here like this, <laughs> and another great thing is handwriting input. So I can actually write right here, and it converts it into text up here in my Google document. 
So now I want to show you how I can use my Kensington wireless keyboard. So let me get rid of my on-screen keyboard here. And I'm going to bring this device out. And you can now see that my mouse is moving across the screen. Now I have some accessibility features that have been enabled in order to allow myself and the kid to better see my mouse pointer. So I've chosen the large mouse pointer, and I've also chosen to highlight the mouse wherever it happens to be. So, here we go. I'm going to type right here. Now remember, I would be using this device from another part of the room, perhaps standing back here behind some students, uh, looking at their screens and so forth. So this allows me to move around the room and do things up here where I can't necessarily touch the screen. So this is a great device to have. It also enables me the opportunity to be able to turn up the volume, turn down the volume, uh, do some different things such as uh, bring up search. work with different desktops, go to our homepage, and much, much more. So this is a really powerful tool for being able to be mobile and also still be able to use this TV from afar. Remember, this TV is also a computer because of the Chrome bit. And then as soon as I get back up here, I can simply use my finger and continue on my way. How cool is that? This is really powerful, a very powerful teaching tool. Now, remember just a moment ago I told you about that $1,000, that $1,500 that I saved? Let me show you what I did next. So remember just a moment ago when I told you I saved $1,500 from what I had originally budgeted for an interactive TV system by creating my own with a 75-inch TV, an Ubi interactive frame, paired with a Chrome bit, I saved a lot of money, and that enabled me to be able to buy this. So what I have here is a simple mount, a 55 inch TV connected with an HDMI cable to an HDMI splitter over there, which allows me to be able to broadcast a signal from that TV to this TV, giving me a room-sized interactive teaching system. Let me show you. When I'm up here in the front of the room teaching my kids, I'm wandering around and I'm an active teacher. Whatever I touch over here also shows up over there. So my kids who are sitting in the back rows can see. Sometimes they can't see past me. They can't see past their friend in order to see what's going on up here. So by putting a TV halfway, halfway down the room, they can see it. They can also hear it. Check this out. If I play a YouTube video here, it shows up over there. We can hear it here, and we can hear it over there. Slavery now, in the United States was legal in all of the original states, but as time remember went on, all states began to abolish it. Compromises were made. If I need to turn the sound down, or perhaps if I need to stop the video, I can still wander around the room without touching the screen and use my Kensington wireless keyboard in order to control my video. I can even use some of Chrome's. Uh, a really handy shortcut, for example, using the letter F in order to make it go full screen. By pushing my space bar and then turning up the volume. Increasingly strained. Numerous problems arose as the slave to free state balance was disturbed when California became a state in 1850. Then. Now, I also want to show you this. The sound, because it's connected via HDMI, is coming out in both places. Let me show you. Starting in 1854, there was an internal war in Kansas over the decision to be so I muted this TV. The slavery issue had also greatly upset the balance here. of political parties in the 1850s. If I knew that TV issue, and the Republicans took I their place with an ideological position of stopping slavery from spreading west. If I enabled in the, the audio presidential on both election TV, of 1860, it's nice and loud, and it fills the room. The kid back here can hear it. The kids up front can hear it. The kids on this side of the room over here can hear it. So I've created a room-side teaching system. So, I know I look a little dark right now, but that's because I want to be able to show you what's going on on the screen. I'm going to be using my handheld wireless keyboard to show you how I teach when I can't be next to my interactive touchscreen. I can't always be there in order to control them. 
I also have this screen now here in the middle of my room, which has uh, allowed me to be able to see better. It's also allowed my kid to be able to see better. And when I'm in the back of the room, I can focus on that TV as well as that TV and use this to make things happen. For example, you can see my mouse moving around. So let's drag a cylinder out here and put it in the middle. And then we're going to click here and go over here and resize it and type in the number 50. And then maybe down here and resize that. And I can click up here and drag this and make that bigger and so forth. So you can see that I can use this wireless keyboard and mouse from anywhere in the room. I don't have to be standing next to my touch screen in order to be able to use this. And so the teaching continues. Great audio, great visibility, an interactive touch screen, and a wireless keyboard and mouse. What a great combination. And the whole thing for less than $2,500. That's pretty amazing. So I got to tell you, this thing here has really added a lot of excitement in my classroom, not only for me, but for my kids. The kids love it. I love it. I have a chance to work with an interactive touch screen. The picture is fantastic. The sound fills the room. And not only that, the price was right. So with the money that I've saved, I can use that to invest in more things for my kids. 3D printers, robots, other STEM activities. Instead of spending all my money on a name brand device, I created my own. It uses the Chrome operating system, which is something that we're all using, and it just works fantastic. I invite you to check it out. Check out my descriptions, check out the parts list, and see how you can make your own. Now remember, brand is not necessarily important. You can use this with any TV. I happen to use a TCL, but you can use whatever TV you may have in your classroom or something else. For now, thank you. I hope you enjoy it and have a great school year.